most of you are very familiar with the Main Street approach and what our committees do, but a uh, quick refresh. The Main Street has a four point approach and we have committees ideally that are very well run for economic vitality, design, promotion, and organization. We know that uh, we invite merchants and the public and our board members to join these committees. And sometimes they're very well run and sometimes they um, you know, lose members and you need to restart. So we wanted to have everybody hear from some committees uh, or sorry, organizations in California that felt like they had some really great things to say about their committees. So Viva Downtown Reading is here, as well as Oceanside. We're going to start with John Truitt, Executive Director from Downtown Reading, as well as Blake Fisher, the Program Coordinator there. Um, John Truitt is something of a star in the Main Street organization. Um, <laughs> Their, their Main Street was established in 1997 and is very recognized for all their efforts and cultural products. Um, John Truett was Reading's 2020 Citizen of the Year. And he grew up in Reading, graduated from Shasta High School, mm -hmm. has been working downtown since the 1990s, helping promote Market Fest. And there's some little known facts that I found about John. Did you know that he is a voice of a video game character? <laughs> And um, it sounds like he's also very involved in the downtown theater. Uh, he does a lot of great stuff. And Blake Fisher uh, does a podcast where they, he interviews people who enhance downtown Reading. And yeah, that's it. So why don't you guys walk us through your slide, slide deck and I will advance it as you speak. <laughs> oh, I didn't embarrass you too much. So we're we're on. Oh, we're on. <laughs> uh, hey, thank you, thank you for that, uh, thank you for that introduction, that august uh, introduction. <laughs> Greatly appreciate it. You did some uh, some good homework, uh, and and thank you for uh, for leaving out uh, all the blemishes in uh, my uh, my illustrious uh, uh, professional acting career uh, as well. Hi, I'm John Troy, uh, executive director of Viva Downtown Reading. Right next to me is uh, Blake Fisher. Uh, our Main Street uh, Program Coordinator. Uh, View Downtown started out as a, uh, as a street party, uh, essentially. Uh, a group of people that got together, our downtown was moribund and uh, nobody was visiting it at night. And so a group of people got together and decided to throw a uh, street party, a street party that was uh, a party that we would like to go to. So we wanted to have music, some beer, some arts and crafts, uh, some farmers. Uh, and see what happened. Um, and it ended up that about 2,500 people attended our first party. And um, we did that for about 10 years. And then we said, hey, you know, why don't we really start in earnest um, getting into uh, looking at how we can uh, truly transform uh, our downtown. And, um, and we uh, came across the um, Main Street program. And um, we were the first organization that, you know, CAMSA, um, when CAMSA formed, uh, CAMSA was looking for a place to um, to make a, um, a Main Street organization uh, underneath its um, its own criteria um, because uh, the Main Street had been um, had become uh, disassociated uh, from the state. Good relationships with the state, but it just didn't have a state program anymore. So um, we were the first organization that signed on um, with uh, CAMSA. Uh, to get our official uh, Main Street uh, organization, and we have been um, grateful and happy about our participation in the Main Street program ever since. You know, we're talking about committees, and one of the things that um, that we found helped us out uh, when we were starting with our uh, Main Street organization uh, about 15 years ago is um, we wanted to work with um, other partners. So we quickly formed our um, our committees, and then um, we said to ourselves, "Hey, um, you know, we need to also work with um, different groups to make sure that some of the events that we plan don't end up uh, overlapping, um, because we don't want uh, two things going on uh, at the same time in downtown. We want something going on that people can come on Friday, and something that people can come on Saturday, and, and make sure that we're coordinated. So what we did is that we worked with um, uh, who was around at the time was." Um, Shasta County Arts Council, 
uh, was a couple blocks down from us and Shasta Historical Society was located in, uh, in downtown Reading. And, um, and we started off just, you know, holding a couple of, a uh, couple of different events, scheduling them at different times, you know, sticking with our, with our big event. And, um, and as downtown started revitalizing, um, you know, we opened up the uh, Cascade Theater, a big art deco theater palace um, here in town, uh, Shasta College. Uh, we convinced them to uh, move one of their um, off campus sites and leadership centers into uh, downtown. Shasta Community Health Center ended up uh, building a large health center. Uh, you can go back to that first um, that slide that's right before this. Um, and people just started moving into downtown. As things started happening, downtown was a, a place that people wanted to be located. People liked the idea of being able to walk to restaurants, being able to walk to the post office, um, just having close contact um, with each other. Our tourism bureau ended up moving into downtown. Um, we have a well-established national trail system. Uh, that organization decided to move into uh, downtown. Our bicycle coalition, Shasta Living Streets, decided to move into downtown. Um, uh, Riverfront Playhouse, who was a playhouse that was on the other side of the, what we refer to as the other side of the river. Uh, they moved downtown, and as more people moved downtown, we started finding that our, our downtown meetings, our downtown collaborative, started becoming not just about, um, you know, our events and, and different dates that we were holding, but how we could actually work together uh, to, to create uh, things that, it, that enhanced uh, downtown. Uh, for example, um, just a little while ago, uh, we put together uh, walking cards and um, also it can be used digitally uh, for people that want to walk a mile or two miles or three miles or four miles if they get their, if they get their workout. Um, Healthy Shasta is interested in getting people walking, so they were a partner with this. Uh, Shasta Historical Society wanted to put down points of interest, historical interest, uh, Arts Council wanted to put down where people could look at, at cultural items. The downtown businesses um, represented in the Reading Chamber of Commerce wanted attention themselves. So we have a map and then we have a list of places that people can go on the digital end. People can look at the map and find things. And this is just an example of a great project that has a beginning, a middle and an end that our downtown collaborative puts together and also fits in with our design committee so, um, so Shasta um, County Arts Council uh, representatives working with historical society representatives and members of our down of our design committee were able to put together the look of it. Um, people associated with our economic development uh, committee made sure that you know various different businesses were listed and that they received uh, enough cards and notices uh, about this. Our promotions committee make sure that it's distributed every place. So what we've found is that with each of these discrete projects that we have, um, all of them in some way, shape or form uh, fit into um, some committee work uh, that needs to be done. And by having relationships with these standing organizations that are in downtown, we're less reliant on just individuals um, that participate because we've all had committees before that we, we didn't realize how much we relied on just one individual until that one individual moves on. But with this and, and having a, a downtown uh, collaborative organization of uh, organizations that are invested in doing things downtown, we find that the participation um, is much more um, consistent. And then also people that are interested in volunteering for just you know a, a, a couple of days or one project or a few months or maybe a year, that they're able to get they're able to get hooked into a project that has a discrete beginning, middle, and an end. And one thing that that this is uh, that having this uh, group together uh, has helped us out with. And Marnie, if you want to move to the next slide, um, has been with our transformation um, strategies. Um, the group um, works together, particularly uh, Viva Downtown, uh, the Chamber, the McConnell Foundation, Historic Society. Uh, Arts Council, um, Reading Trails, uh, worked together um, pretty hard to put together a proposal to um, have uh, downtown as a one of the state designated uh, cultural districts uh, that came up a few years ago. And so we were able to um, apply for that, uh, working together in partnership, um, and uh, it worked. We became an official um, California, uh, California state um, 
cultural district. And so that fits into our transformation strategy, uh, which is arts and entertainment. So we already know ahead of time, you know, that we want uh, this arts and entertainment district um, to work. And so our partnerships with McConnell Foundation, um, uh, the Chamber, Visit Reading, and a few other organizations can help in our organizational goal, which is to develop the um, IOOF Hall. We have a historic uh, hall for uh, International Odd Fellows built in 1888. We're in the bottom floor of it now. We've been slowly um, restoring this building along with our partners. Uh, our, so our, our organization uh, committee um, helps uh, put that together. Um, we work with people to put different people such as uh, Shasta County Arts Council and uh, business partners in order to uh, promote um, art that's happening in downtown. We've got our design committee um, once again, Arts Council is heavily involved in that, but also our other partners, you know, making sure that there's uh, quality design and then economic vitality with um, groups that are represented by our chamber, by the college and other organizations. Um, and our second uh, transformation strategy that we have, which is the next uh, page, um, business support. Uh, so we, we want to uh, reinvest in, uh, in business support. Over the past couple of years, we've been heavily invested in planning, um, working with the city of Reading, who's also a member of our, de of our downtown uh, collaborative, uh, putting the streets through. Um, I don't know, uh, I, I think that there were some notices uh, that went out Main Street wise, that you know, our, our market street, our main street through the middle of town was covered over with a mall. Uh, a roof was put up and some buildings were torn down, uh, several, Blocks were taken out to build mall style parking lot. And uh, we had a mall which immediately became empty. And so over the past few years, we've really been focusing on pushing that street through developing those blocks uh, that are that are parking lot. And now it's time uh, that the streets are through and um, and construction is going up in some new places, mixed use places. Blake, in fact, lives in one of the new mixed use places. So we have a resident uh, in, in downtown that is our um, program coordinator. Um, reinvesting in, uh, in business support, um, redefining our district, and we have uh, the partners uh, already established uh, through a lot of our work with our downtown collaborative. Can you go to the next slide? So, you know, as a result of our different partnerships and, and working with um, different people, it makes a different downtown. Um, we've had, uh, we've done an awful lot of work over the past couple of years. I wish we could say that we've done, a lot, done it all, uh, but we haven't done it all. It's, it's the work of ourselves and our partners working together uh, to make a more vibrant downtown. Um, historical, historic Society was very much interested in This Place Matters, which uh, us as Main Streets, uh, you know, we're connected to uh, this, this place matters. So our historic society has been very interested in that. Our arts uh, groups have been very interested in uh, California Cultural District. Um, our our trail uh, people have been very and bike people have been very interested in connecting our trails that run along the river uh, to downtown. Um, all kinds of different groups, particularly the, the chamber groups, are interested in our large events. Um, Cascade Theater and and our theater district is starting to shape up. Um, you might notice also underneath this place, Reading, um, that's our um, that's our local 2030 club. So we've used uh, the building that we're um, rehabbing right now to uh, it houses the uh, 2030 club. Blake is a member of the 2030 club. And if we can move to the next slide, more and more pictures, um, uh, podcasts, murals, just a lot of projects that have a discrete uh, beginning, uh, middle, and an end. Um, Blake, can you describe um, some of the things that, that happened with First Fridays and some of the businesses? Yeah, one of the um, committees that I'm working on right now and starting to build is our downtown business group. And our downtown businesses wanted to come together and say, we need to start something. And we decided to go with First Fridays. And that was one of our boutique stores called Carousel. And so we started this uh, December last year, and it really started taking off in the spring of this year. And so basically, with First Fridays, a lot of our downtown businesses that were closing at 5 p.m. will stay open on um, the first Friday till about 8 to 9 p.m. And each business does something different where it's not an actual event, but they are calling in their own artists, musicians, 
and creators to activate their space. And it just becomes a big walking tour um, that not only checks out our arts and culture buildings like the Cascade Theater and Old City Hall, Shasta County Arts Council, but to support a lot of our local downtown businesses. And so you see a lot more people walking around downtown with families, um, young adults, and individuals that wanna see all the revitalization taking place with major construction projects and supporting our local businesses. So it's been a great unofficial official event that our businesses wanted to put together. Um, our younger um, team members too, um, we've hired uh, a couple of other people that are uh, that are in their 20s. Blake is in his 20s and he lives downtown. And we've been looking for, um, for young people um, that are in their 20s. Uh, to come on board with us. Um, one of our events coordinators, uh, Jake McConaughey, is very tied in uh, to the whole music scene. We've got a lot of musicians uh, in Reading, so we're bringing a lot of um, music um, downtown during our um, revitalization uh, project. And, and one of the things also that I found out about, um, you know, working with um, with our 20 year old is that um, is Blake certainly has a much different sense of um, of podcast and technology. Um, than I do, and you know, and um, and I think that one of the things that we did at first um, when we were looking to bring in uh, young people is that we were looking to bring in young people to continue the events that us old timers had started, and that was a mistake. And uh, and we went back and said, what do you young people want to do in your city? And uh, as soon as we did that, we found a, a whole new host of um, of activities that are bringing young people. Um, into downtown. So if I, if I have anything to recommend about bringing in, uh, uh, bringing in young people into Main Street organizations, it's um, find out what they're interested in, give them the opportunities uh, to present, um, to present uh, their downtown uh, for themselves. Don't be too attached uh, to the things that you've created. That's us in a nutshell. That was great. Hold on, let me see if there's any questions. take over for Marnie right now. Um, there's no questions, I believe. Let me see here. No direct questions. Yeah, just a nice comment. Uh, it says, awesome job broadening the base of support with 20-somethings. I was also really struck by, you know, I feel like we all collaborate with a lot of people, but really emphasizing that um, doing committees with other organizations rather than individuals is a way to make it a, a long-standing committee. That seems really smart. Yeah, and you know, and what I love about um, being with different groups, especially people that are connected with like arts councils or chambers or historic societies or professional auditoriums or foundations is that when I walk into a room, there, there is everybody knows something uh, that we don't. And um, and our experts in something that we're not. So it's uh, it's very helpful. Thank you, Marnie. Thank you guys so much. And I know we have got to stay on task. So if there's no particular questions for these guys, we'll move on to Oceanside. So we have our chair of PAMS as well as the Chief Operations Director and Director of Business Development of Oceanside, Gumara Escargitega. Sorry, Gumaro. <laughs> okay. And we also have Marianne Thiem, who's Vice Chair of the Board of Directors. So I'm gonna advance to your slide and let you speak for yourself. Oh, sorry. Um, Gumaro uh, ran the Vista Village Business Association from 2011 to 2013. And so he's been at Oceanside since 2013 to now. Thank you, Marnie. Yeah, so we're going a little bit more into, I think what Viva, Viva presented right now is such a, a great tool of how collaborations really exist in your community. So we're gonna talk about a little bit more of the technical part of, the, of community development. I think it's important to understand, you know, in your own community, I know some of us struggle to uh, develop these committees and get the right stakeholders to be part of these goals and objectives that we all want to have for our downtown district. So, so we'd like to welcome you. And um, I do have our design chair and actually vice board 
vice chair, board of director of the Institute of Oceanside here. And she's a local resident, guys, a retired resident. She retired from at and um, and she has been involved with, how long with Main Street? Uh, about 20 years, ever since I moved here. I started, I got involved with the Dia de los Muertos event and uh, fell in love with Oceanside and with the Main Street people. So I'm the one resident on our board. Everybody else are business owners. And it's a key feature why she's here. You know, we, we talk about residents and how it's important to collaborate, not just for business, but also the community itself. So this is a great opportunity here that you guys could like to see. And also you, we would like to see that you guys also implement some of these strategies that we use um, uh, for, for our downtown uh, Main Street program here. Um, so moving on to the next slide, Marnie. Um, so basically what we wanted to talk about here is the process of community development. As you guys can see on the right side, that's our downtown district. It's about 84 square blocks. It's, we're only a 21 year old um, uh, Main Street uh, organization. And so we're fairly new to this, but we're really a robust, energetic entrepreneur organization that we have continued to grow in the last 10 years. Even despite the pandemic, we still did better than we expected. Um, it's just because we were just an active group, but this is the reason why, um, you know, when we go and, and start a mainstream your community, what do we first do is we do door to door visits. We meet individual businesses on a one to one basis. Talk to them, have an open conversation. Do not, it's no sales pitch at all. It's just more about how they can continue to improve their, their location and continue to be part of this community. And we need their, their input, we need their volunteer work, they need their, their resources so we can continue to provide great services. So, also, during your visits, this is will make you understand who are your passionate folks, who are the ones that want to be left alone, who are the ones that really want to get involved in events. So it really start categorizing who your market is in your district. So understand those those dynamics when you're going out and talking to these to your, your stakeholders and and um, you know and understand what their needs are. It's such a a, a, a tool that you want to use on a year to year basis. So uh, but yeah, so now I see what wanna you want to really diversify your committees. 20 years ago, most of the people who were interested in making Oceanside better were residents because we have very few new businesses. So they are still key components. Every once in a while, we'll bring in a consultant if we feel we really need to sit down and take something apart and put it back together again. Of course, your merchants are important. They're the ones that are trying to do business and that you're trying to help. Uh, we work very closely with the um, Oceanside Visitor Center because they're interested in what's going on When because we have a lot of people coming here. We're right on the ocean and we have a big tourism crowd. Keep your government staff involved if you can. It's much easier to get them to approve things if they've been part of the process all along rather than sort of surprising them and having to have them catch up. And it's the passionate people, as Gumara said, in the community. It doesn't really matter what their background or do they work here, do they live here. It's people who really have a passion about seeing something done. And they're the ones that will stick with you and work with you. Yeah. And so when I want to go back to Viva too, you know, they have expressed the collaboration of teams that they have developed. This is the committees that can also be part of your teams. And how do we collaborate and continue to focus on the needs of your district? So and there's a lot of moving parts. We have multiple partners here in Oceanside, just like Viva. And so we implement what the needs are so we can, you know, look for funding, fundraise, you know, event planning, et cetera. So there's a lot of great things that come from this diversif uh, diversifying your community. So um, next slide, Marty. So now I'm gonna leave this to yeah. our design chair. Um, art that excites, that phrase alone was something that sort of, we did it, but we didn't know that's what we wanted to do. And that's where we pulled in a consultant who really helped us drill down into what it was that we were trying to accomplish and that we wanted. And out of that came this logo that you see and art that excites. Um, one of our first projects is a mural program, which you can see it was designed to develop 10, 10 murals. The one we're on right now is a really exciting stained glass mural that depicts what's in the ocean next to Oceanside. 
and it'll be a 12 by 16 foot panel um, on the side of one of our buildings. We funded that partially by people being able to sponsor a fish and they're gonna get their name on a plaque next to the mural. Um, so it's exciting. It's gotten people involved. We've got volunteers out of it. We've got people that worked with the artist who's actually doing the mural, Don Myers, and have gone in and helped him cut glass and polish glass. So there's a lot of ways we pulled in a stained glass company in the area who's donated stuff and helped us with special glass. Um, it's a really exciting project. It's just one of, it's the fourth one that we've actually executed so far, and we hope to keep going. And yeah, we'll show you some images of our completed projects here, but also our wayfinding program. We have determined that Oceanside needs a directional program as we're continuing to attract tourists and our locals. A lot of locals haven't been to our downtown district for many years. As a matter of fact, they haven't even, we, we started an ambassador program. We have heard that they haven't been to downtown for over 20 years. It just tells you that this connection and it's Interstate 5 that runs right through the heart of our city, um, obviously with the coastal community and then the inland folks. So there's a little disconnection there. So we're doing a lot to keep them engaged with us. And one of the things is to develop a wayfinding program. And again, this is a partnership through the downtown property business improvement district here in Oceanside that was uh, developed and implemented in 2019. Now remember 2020 was our COVID uh, pandemic that hit us. So we actually had funding available to be able to leverage through the arts and to be able to develop it through other sorts of economic uh, initiatives that we wanted to look into. And so we're leveraging that funding and be able to implement it through our downtown districts. And that is basically our property owners that are funding this program. We're also looking to brand a downtown branding uh, guidelines so we can also make it a more of a destination and be a marketing tool for not just Main Street, but also our partners, our businesses, and our local residents. You know, a lot of people, uh, you know, see downtown Oceanside, but it's just sounds so, you know, boring. You know, we want to be able to say something more like, you know, it's just an example. We have one of the largest wooden piers in our district, why don't we leverage that asset to be able to continue to provide a marketing source for all of our people surrounding that peer district, the peer area. So there's a lot of things that we're working here internally with this design committee, but this is where we leverage either funding or we also leverage on partners like the city government. A lot of our, our ideas also come from our economic development uh, division and also our city, city manager's office as well. So we do have great partnerships that, that allows us to continue to move forward with these projects. We have other projects that do not pertain because of the funding, but we do have a landmark sign that we're working on as well. And so these are ways how we can develop this. So, and again, these are some of the murals projects that we have developed here. That's the mosaic that's mural. The one we're working on right now that's going to be put up after the first of the year. And the mosaic mural is an interesting concept because it's actually, this was kept us relevant during the pandemic. It allowed us to, you know, be safe and be able to get families on a one-on-one -on -one basis to come in and do something outside of their homes. And so this was a very powerful tool that we use with the artists and the relationship we gain with the artists and the community has been enormous. Now we're working on a block party to, to put this up. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's going to be a fun day where we're going to be bringing our communities back out to enjoy what they develop together. So uh, we have about 35 to 40 fish there. So we ended up raising about 25,000, maybe 30,000 when it's all complete. It might be even more depending if we can sell the biggest fish out there. But it is definitely a great uh, way to engage with our members of the community and be part of something that can last for a long time. This is going to be a 12 foot by 16 foot um, mural, uh, or mosaic mural, that's gonna be located right across the street from our office and it's the gateway down to downtown, coming into downtown Oceanside. So it's a really, really, really great, vibrant, you know, uh, mural. And we had the glass company donating a lot of the material and product of this, and they also became a sponsor. And they actually, staff was so excited that they actually gave us their best glass that they have stored in their office, you know, because they just didn't want to do anything or have a special project for this. So, so they actually donated certain colors that don't print. And so it's a really great partnership that we have. And just to give you an idea, the company that we're, we're partnering with uh, built the pool at Hearst Castle. That's their claim to fame. So they're really well-known uh, uh, tile company or glass and tile. 
and it's Oceanside Glass, yeah. by the way. Oceanside Glass, and it's uh, they're actually from Oceanside, but they moved to Carlsbad because they acquired Spectrum. Uh, but they're still involved in the community, and they have been really a good blessing for us to continue to provide what we do here. So, uh, next slide. So, also wanted to talk about how to avoid stagnant committees. I know a lot of mainstream managers and uh, directors. Uh, you know, sometimes we get stuck, and so you know, we we have you know when we complete our goals and objectives, you know, we want to make sure that we continue to define other goals and objectives. And so what does this mean? So in order to avoid standing committees, this, is, this has to be either a design chair or a staff led to speak about these, these lack of goals or lack of projects or anything that we can come back together. Uh, we also uh, like to review and evaluate our existing projects to see how we can improve, how we can add more um, programs to it and be able to be more inclusive into our, our, our plannings here. Also, if you guys have an annual work plan, review it, you know, start adding to new to the projects. If you don't have the funding for it, you don't have to continue to, to you know, uh, stop working on them. I feel that there is always an opportunity to, to find the right time on some of these projects. So if you, if you ever feel that you're stuck somewhere, voice up, speak up, and please communicate this to your volunteers because it's very important that if you're feeling, you know, stagnant, there's others that are gonna feel the same way. And so be, be responsive as well, but make sure to listen to or find these cues that will make you, you know, do more for your community. Um, also, one of the key components here is budget for consultant to help guide communities reach their goals. I think it's important that you bring outside folks into your projects so they can feel and understand how this can work out. And having another set of eyes that is a consultant, a paid consultant, can lead you to success, so either through fundraising, through programming, through implementation. Any way you guys can be able to help, consultants will get you out of the funk and be able to do product and be productive in your own community. So, and you'll find some people who don't understand why a main street should be involved in art, in design. Um, what's that got to do with things? Well, it's got a lot to do. It helps the morale of, of all of your people who live there. It helps bring people to town, which helps your businesses. If you think about it, it's kind of obvious. And to me, one of the most important things is if you don't get involved, somebody else will. And if you want to control what's on your streets, what gets painted on the side of your buildings and have an involvement in it and help it and make it grow and be better, you got to tackle it. Because if there's a vacuum, somebody else is stepping in and take a break. Yeah. So that completes our concludes our presentation. And uh, if you guys have any questions, um, I'm going to open the chat box, see if there's anything. Yeah. All right. Marianne, I love that. If you don't get involved, someone else will. So that's a really great tagline. <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> Um, so what is the uh, one question says, what does the door to door outreach? So I think they just need a little. Yeah. So door to door is basically you know, visiting businesses, knocking mm -hmm. the door, getting to know who the right. owner is, getting to know who the manager is. And there is a disconnect with managers and ownership and understanding that this connection is also very important. And you will only know if you go visit the business, you, it's, it's, it's the best strategy, the oldest strategy. Uh, what mm -hmm. you can use is do personable uh, in, in, uh, introductions, invitations. It's the best form of getting your Main Street very active because if you don't visit these businesses, they're never mm -hmm. going to know who you are. Um, and our businesses, a lot of them are new. Um, for a long time, a lot of our buildings were owned by people who didn't even live in Oceanside, maybe not even in California. So it was hard to have a conversation with them or hard to get them interested. Now we're getting a lot of local, both chefs and retail people who come into town, but we don't know them. And a lot of them don't really know Oceanside. So if Camaro doesn't go and knock on the door, you'll never get them involved. Yeah. There's a question by Amanda Kruschke about, is a staff or member or community members that do door to door reach? And the answer is yes, all of the above is very important. As a matter of fact, our board members tell me who to go visit because they have talked to them or they lead me to 
to a, a potential sponsor or potential influencer or anybody that's best for the benefit of the district, our board members have really done a great job in stepping up to, to continue to mention Main Street Oceanside as a, as a lead partner in the downtown. So it, is, it takes really a village to make sure Main Streets are very successful. Uh, mm -hmm. You do need a strong staff though. You do need somebody that can guide and oversee these projects. However, if you can get our, your, your, your volunteers, which are include board members and committee, to, to talk about what your services are and how important these resources are for them, it's going to get you guys a better uh, a door open, basically, when you come visit them. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great thing because that's what you build as a community. You, you get others to work with you and continue, mm -hmm. to, and, and they will be part of something special, basically, if they all get involved. I love to hear somebody say, well, what is Main Street? I don't know. I don't know what they do. And uh, to, to explain it, and by the time I get to the end of my little bit, they want to volunteer. They want to get involved because they maybe didn't know that was going on or that there was an opportunity. So you got to get out on the street and talk. Nice. Very nice presentation.